Hi, my name is Grant Kramer, and I am a professor emeritus at the University of Nevada, Reno. Today, we will be continuing my series on grape varietals. I think you're going to enjoy this one. Are you passionate about wine as I am? Then you know that growing grapes, fermenting wine, and drinking that wine is good for the heart as well as the soul. And if you are interested in having some private consulting or direct contact with me, you can reach me at my new email address called drvinoinreno at gmail.com. I'll be happy to respond to you. Mourvedra is a very interesting grape producing high quality wines. Its origin is interesting. It's been said that it may have been brought by the Phoenicians to Spain at around 500 BC, but there's no evidence for this and it would be very difficult to prove this fact. At any rate, the origin is attributed to Spain, in particular two different areas of Spain. One could argue which one was first, but it's not really well known. One is from the town that is now called Segunto, but at one time earlier on, it was called Morvedre in Spain, which is just north of Valencia. The French took it to the Provence region and called it Morvedra. And the, another group, uh, maybe a hundred years later, also brought grapes up from a region from a town called Mataró, which is just north of Barcelona, and was called Mataro, and was taken to the Roussillon region. As a result, the two different groups, those names have become fixed in French nomenclature, but the French today call it Morvedra, but funny enough, the Spanish call it Monastrel. And the reason for that is not clear, but one suggestion is that in order to appease both groups, they gave it a new name altogether. And Monastrel is related to monastery, which is associated perhaps with the monks that first developed these grapes or utilized these grapes for making wine. So there are two synonyms largely used for these grapes, Mourvedre, which is the French version of the name that was used at one time in the Mourvedre region, and Mataro for the city of Mataro. And both of those names are used in the United States, but Mourvedre is now the adopted name. So the primary name that is considered by the international groups for viticulture, call it Monastrel, but it is commonly used in many countries as Morvedra. The parents of this region are unknown, and that's not too surprising given the fact that it may have this ancient history. It its popular locations where it's grown are in Spain, France, the USA, and Australia. Morvedra likes warm to hot climates. In fact, it requires hot climates or very hot climates to fully ripen and reach its potential. It's a very late ripening grape, as we can see here in the chart down on the left. Morvedra grapevines are vigorous. They have medium-sized leaves that have three lobes with very shallow lateral sinuses and short tooth margins. It has a U-shaped petiolar sinus. The clusters are medium to large, somewhat compact and conical. The blue-black berries are medium and round with thick skins and the shoot tips are felty, a kind of felty white color. It has good fertility with moderate yields. It does well on deep limestone soils with limited but regular water supply. It has, as I said, a late bud break and very late harvest. 
that requires high heat for full ripeness, especially at night. And it is sensitive to mites, esca, and leafhoppers. Its fruit and wine characteristics are that it produces high quality, full bodied and aromatic wines. It has high tannins and therefore makes tannic wines with dark color and good structure. Its fruit flavor descriptions are intense blackberry or red fruit or violets and leather, earth and game or a mixture of these characteristics. It's often used in blends with Grenache and Syrah, often known as a GSM or for Grenache, Syrah and Mervedra. The wines are well suited for aging. There are more than a dozen clones registered at the California Foundation Plant Services, and the descriptions can be found at this site. You'll find, particularly since this is a very ancient variety, that there's a lot of clonal variation for Mervedra. A recent study by Romero et al. from the Agronomy Journal exemplifies this variation in Spanish clones. In this research that they did, it was a four-year study of seven different clones, and they found that the clones varied in their vigor, in their yield, in their drought tolerance, and their water use efficiency, as well as in their grape and wine quality, and in the way that they responded to drought and improved their grape and wine quality. So I, it's a complicated study with lots of measurements, and I'm just going to focus on a few things here at the bottom right. So if we look at the low moderate vigor clones, which are 360, 372, and 373, and 276, we can see that they had better berry and wine quality. And that the high vigor clones, 188, four and 94 had poor quality berries and poor wine quality and in their response to drought stress as well. And this is because they were larger, more leafy grapevines, which probably made the canopies a bit more closed in and not as exposed to the light. And drought stress will tend to open the canopy but not as much apparently for these clones as for the low or moderate vigor clones. But it gets a little more complicated than that. And let me just go through this for a moment. So if we look at 360, which is the highest berry and wine quality produced clone, and in particular to drought stress, it also is very drought tolerant. However, there's a big problem. And what I mean by drought tolerance is, is that uh, there was very little impact of the drought stress on the leaf area of the vines so that they still were very productive. The problem with this vine is that it has very low yields to begin with, and that makes it unacceptable. In addition, it didn't try to save any water, so it had what we call a very low water use efficiency, which is a measure, that basically it's a measure of how much water they're transpiring versus the amount of carbon they're accumulating through photosynthesis. And a more water use efficient vine would use less water than a more wasteful. So their water use efficiency was down, meaning they were very spendy on their water. So for this reason, they didn't recommend this clone. On the other hand, if we look at 372, it's also a low moderate vigor clone. And this clone had the next best berry and wine quality. And if we look at its drought tolerance, it was low. Now what this means is it didn't die, but what it means is that it implemented measures to protect itself against drought by reducing the leaf area, which also reduced transpiration. And it also closed its stomates more rapidly or significantly 
and thus saved water so that when we actually look at its water use efficiency, it was improved relative to, say, 360. On the other hand, the other clones that were very high vigor, as like 94, the water use efficiency was very effective or good, but they just didn't produce good quality grapes. So it's a complicated story. And it goes to show you that you need to look carefully at your clones, not one size fits all. And depending on what your particular conditions are, one clone may be more suitable than another. And when I talk about grape and wine quality here, I'm talking about the polyphenolic content and color, the anthocyanins, so the tannins and the anthocyanins, as well as the aromatic potential. They looked at the volatile compounds and in the wines as well. And uh, these things were improved under drought stress, particularly in the low moderate vigor clones, but not so much in the high vigor clones, but to some extent, their quality was inferior to the low moderate vigor clones. Hope that was clear. So in summary, Morvedra, or Monastrel, if you were, is an ancient variety from Spain, perhaps going back all the way to the Phoenicians. It is late bud breaking and very late ripening. It prefers very hot climates for full ripening potential. And it is a good candidate for Southern Nevada because of its drought resistance, its heat tolerance, and late ripening, which allows for a harvest in the cooler fall temperatures to produce higher quality, more aromatic, more fruity fruit. Well, that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like this video, then please like it on my YouTube channel, as it'll give more opportunities for other people to view this video and others like it. And if you really enjoyed this video, then I encourage you to subscribe to my YouTube channel, where you'll find other videos on grape varietals, on viticulture, and even on winemaking practices. Have a great day.